Hello. Okay. Welcome to the tutorial on how to use the linearized standalone solar inverter. Okay. So what is linearized standalone solar inverter? So if you go to the market, you can see that you can buy a standalone solar inverter. Okay. But the problem is uh, when you build this uh, system, okay, using standalone solar inverter, you don't have the simulation. So you want to uh, take the simulation to see the performance first. So you have a PV which is available in the MATLAB. The battery also available, load also available. But standalone solar inverter is not available. So the problem with the, if you want to make the uh, standalone solar inverter using a real component, the problem is the simulation time and the simulation burden is very high because uh, solar inverter is a quite complicated system. Okay, you have a MPPT and converters. Okay, inside the system. So in order to reduce the computational burden, okay, so we linearize the system. Okay, so uh, if you look inside here, so the system is basically just three sources. Uh, a voltage source, two voltage source, control by voltage source, and one current source, and all the coding are inside here. Okay. So how to use this? Okay, you can see here. Uh, this is the uh, analyzer. So basically, all the output here is analyzed, is sent here, and processed inside this. Okay. So you can see here the result. Okay, the scope. Okay, you can see the power, the state of charge of the battery, DC voltage. Okay, means that the voltage of the PV and the battery. Okay, and as well as the, sorry, uh, as well as current and V uh, V battery. Okay, uh, this one cannot zoom, but this one can be zoom. Okay, and I AC. We isolated it because. The power we use is small, so we have to separate it because this power current is quite large. This current is quite small because 230 voltage. Okay, now we look at this is the result and this is the irradiance. You can change the irradiance. So for this case, you have a uh, NOCT, means that your operation is according to the module temperature accurately. So this is TA is the ambient temperature. Okay, and this TM is the module temperature. So you have the function here that goes here. Okay, you have the irradiance and then you have the load. So if you can see here, you can choose a constant load 1, 2 or oscillate between load 1 and load 2 which is has the time of the oscillation here or variable load that can be controlled here. So depend on the system you want to test. So it's already complete with the load bank. Now we move on to the standalone solar inverter, the linearized version, which is you can see here, you can simulate almost 480 seconds. Okay, it is quite a long time to simulate this. Okay, so there is no problem with the computer hanging because uh, this is a linearized model and it is very quick. Okay. So one more thing you should know that the battery you can see here okay the rate of the battery is changed to only one because if this one too large the SOC takes time to operate and also the time response for the battery is only 0 0.01 okay uh, normally it is around 30 second but if you do 30 second it is also take a long time to operate okay depend on your objective okay but for this thing uh, for this simulation we just want to test whether the system can operate properly or not okay okay now we move on to inside here you can see inside here you have the website okay the video tutorial which is this video okay and the explanation okay and then you have a converter and algorithm setting so for converter you can see here the transient response so for this one of course converter in actual condition it has transient response okay a delay 
Okay, so you have to include this. Okay, I suggest it is very small. Okay, and the boost efficiency. Okay, the boost efficiency is for the MPPT operation. Okay, when you have MPPT, you need to have a boost converter. Okay, before goes into the inverter. So you have to have boost efficiency, inverter efficiency. So boost efficiency is around, it should be lower usually. Okay, you have inverter efficiency. Inverter is much more efficient. Okay, and then you have the output of the AC. 230 and 50 hertz. So you can change this later. But when, uh, just a reminder, when you change this, you have make sure you have to change the parameter inside the analyzer. Okay, the analyzer is based on the 230 and 50. Okay, and... Then the algorithm we can set it is so this is the sample time for the the linear model okay okay the smaller is better but it is I'll uh, uh, take computation a lot of computation okay and then you have the initial duty cycle uh, step size okay maximum duty cycle this one is a standard one okay and that's it that is the setting for this system so you just change this okay this one is actually usually used inside the standalone inverter itself this one usually set by the uh, by the manufacturer of the standalone solar inverter but for this one is actually you can set it up on your own okay for the overcharge protection i use a simple one uh, usually right now the system usually use uh, what is called the floating voltage Okay, I not use that one because that one require a quite complicated algorithm. So for this one, it is just much more simple. Okay, after you set it up, okay, you can start running this. Okay, run this. Okay, so you can see here it simulate quite fast. Eh? Okay, just start is already fifty second. Okay, so you can see here the load is quite high. Okay, it is overcharged. So if you want to control this, let me stop here first. Okay, so you can see here variable load. So if variable load, you can manipulate this one so uh, I'll start again okay so you can see here the power is negative means the battery supply the load so if I can reduce this okay you can see here it is reduce okay so you can see here the load reduce okay the AC load reduce and the battery is charging because it is positive it's charging Okay, this is the power of the PV and if you reduce the this one okay so you can see here the battery okay the state of charge of the battery so you can see here it's still charging so if I reduce this back okay the battery is discharging okay so reduce it back okay something like this okay you can see here the voltage is at the VMP Okay, this is the current of the PV, which is 3 ampere. Okay, and if you can increase it back, so you can see here, it's charging. Okay, the SOC increase. And then if you increase the load, okay, so the battery have to discharge to supply for the increase and the load. Okay, you can see the voltage of the battery changes. Okay. So I said 20, uh, 47 is the uh, operation shutdown. Okay, so you can see here after 44, uh, 47. Okay, uh, the algorithm should stop the, uh, stop the, uh, the battery from operating. Okay, or maybe not for something wrong with the PC actually. Okay, it's okay. Ah, uh, we can just reduce it. 
Okay, sorry about that. My PC hang. Ah, uh, so, so that is for if you can manipulate the load. So how about the load? Some of the tests. Okay, you can see here you have. Uh, I give you some charge and discharge test. So for discharge test, I set this to twenty two. Eh? Twenty two. Okay, and the load is two hundred ohm. First load. Okay. And you can use this. Okay, sorry about that. My PC hang again. Okay, this model should be uh, simple, but uh, maybe something wrong with the system. Okay, how about the overcharge? Okay, so you can set this one to 85. 85 and then you set it to load number 2. Okay, this is overcharge test. Okay, basically it uh, show that the system able to save itself. Okay, if it is overcharged. So you can see here the state of charge is almost 88. So it will start stop to operate when the battery is almost full. So maybe I pause it, make it. Uh, okay. Let me pause the video first. Okay, you can see here. Okay. So I set the uh, floating voltage is 56, not the floating voltage, but uh, overcharge voltage. So you can see here, the load is still operate, but the battery, but the PV is not operate at zero. Eh? So zero voltage. Okay, uh, basically the PV is turned off and just use the battery. So it will prevent the battery from overcharge, but at after certain level, it will continue uh, to start again the PV and charge the battery again. Okay, so this is a overcharge test. Okay, uh, now we can try the load test. Okay, for load test, we I suggest you to set it for 50. Okay, at the middle of the charge. Uh, of the SOC so if I run this ok the load will oscillate ok well, let me pause the video first ok at 100 second the load will change ok because we already set this Oh, sorry, I forget to change the load method. So, stop this first. Oscillate. Okay. So, you can see here at 100 seconds, it will change. Okay, you can see here the load change. From 100, okay, around 100 to 220. A 250 watt. Okay. So basically what happened is the state of charge increase and decrease because you can see here the load is from charging. Okay. Uh, positive is absorbing power. Means that charging and releasing power. Discharging. Okay. And because this is we set the non-ideality of the system you can see here the state of charge will become lower and lower because of the efficiency is not 100% ok you can see the current how it is changed ok the voltage ok the voltage of the battery ok this voltage is quite large because of the small size ok uh, in reality it's not become like this eh? ok 
So that is how to use the uh, linearized standalone solar inverter. Okay. Good luck with your simulation.